Hey y'all, in this video we'll talk about Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality, which are two very useful and general inequalities in probability theory. Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality are examples of tail bounds. Tail bounds bound the probability of large deviations. For example, if this is the probability density function for a random variable x, we might want to say something like, it's not very likely that x is bigger than t. Or we might want to say something like, it's not very likely that the deviation between x and its expectation is greater than t. Tail bounds are an extremely useful tool in the analysis of randomized algorithms. Markov's inequality and Chebyshev's inequality are two of the simplest such bounds, but they're really general, and in some cases they can be tight. So let's start with Markov's inequality. Markov's inequality is the following. Suppose that x is a real-valued random variable that only takes non-negative values. Then, for any alpha greater than zero, the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha is at most the expectation of x divided by alpha. Another way to say it is, for any non-negative x and any c greater than zero, the probability that x is greater than or equal to c times its expectation is at most 1 divided by c. I'm going to give a proof by picture of Markov's inequality. It's a good exercise to turn this into a proof by proof, or you can check out the lecture notes. It's basically just one line. Okay, so here's the proof by picture. Suppose that x is a real-valued, non-negative random variable. So x is a function from some underlying probability space, omega, to the non-negative real numbers. So this green curve here is just the graph of x viewed as a function from omega to the reals. In this way of drawing the random variable x, the probability that x is bigger than alpha is just the measure of this set here. That is, this is the set of states of the world where the random variable x is at least alpha. Similarly, in this way of drawing x, the expectation of x is just given by the area under this curve here. Well, this area is at least the area of these boxes here, because all I've done is subtract area. Here I'm using the fact that x is non-negative. But the area of these boxes is easy to calculate. They're just boxes. They have height alpha, and the total width is just the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha. So the total area there is alpha times the probability that x is greater than or equal to alpha. So rearranging this equation here is going to give us Markov's inequality. Next, we come to Chebyshev's inequality. Chebyshev's inequality can be useful for any random variable x, not necessarily non-negative, as long as x has finite variance. So Chebyshev's inequality says the following. Let x be a real-valued random variable. Then for any alpha greater than or equal to zero, the probability that x deviates from its expectation by more than alpha is at most the variance of x divided by alpha squared. Another way to say this is for any real-valued x and any c greater than zero, the probability that the deviation of x from its expectation is greater than c times the square root of the variance of x is at most 1 divided by c squared. For a quick proof of Chebyshev's inequality, we just apply Markov's inequality to the random variable x minus the expectation of x squared. More precisely, let's write the probability that the absolute value of x minus its expectation is greater than or equal to alpha is equal to the probability that x minus its expectation squared is greater than or equal to alpha squared. And now we can just apply Markov's inequality to this. So Markov's inequality says that this is at most the expectation of x minus the expected value of x squared divided by alpha squared. And this thing on the top is just the variance of x. So this proves Chebyshev's inequality. Finally, let's conclude with a quick bit of history. While the names Markov and Chebyshev for these inequalities are standard, they're actually historically not quite right. First, actually, Bienname first stated Chebyshev's inequality in 1853, although without proof, and Chebyshev proved it in 1867. Moreover, Markov's inequality was known to these folks before Markov was even born in 1856. Markov was actually Chebyshev's student, and he gave a different proof of Chebyshev's inequality in his thesis in 1884. But for some reason, we call Markov's inequality Markov's inequality, and Chebyshev's inequality Chebyshev's inequality, and it stuck. So that's how it is. 
Okay, so that's it for this short video. In the next one, we'll see a few examples of these inequalities in action. Thanks for watching.